What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com back with another Blender quick tutorial for you. So in today's video I wanted to talk about the snap functions contained inside of Blender. So I think when a lot of people start with Blender, they don't realize there's actually functions you can turn on to help you move things more precisely and make things snap to different lengths inside of your Blender models. So I wanted to talk about how to use those functions in order to add precision to your models. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the things that people, especially that come from CAD software backgrounds, find a little bit disconcerting about Blender is when you move objects around. So if I was to move this object, for example, and uh, you move it like this, it doesn't really snap to anything or anything like that, meaning it just kind of like moves around in space. I mean, you can obviously use keyboard shortcuts like X, Y, Shift, Y, Z, things like that to lock to different axes. But in general, by default, it isn't really set up to um, snap objects to different lengths and other things like that. I think a lot of people assume that just because it doesn't do it by default, it can't do it. And that's not accurate at all. So if you go up to the top of your page, you can look at this little menu right here and there's actually an option in here called snapping. And so what snapping does is snapping allows you to set this so the objects you select snap to different things. So instead of, for example, um, if I take this object and uh, I move it around, instead of it just kind of moving around in space, what it's gonna do instead is it's gonna snap to different anchors. And so the first thing is how you turn it on. So you turn on snapping either by clicking on this little button right here or by doing a shift tab. So if you do a shift tab, notice how this turns on. And so once this is turned on, this will do a number of different kinds of snapping. So for example, the first option in here is snap to increment. And so what snap to increment is going to do is this is going to actually snap your object to different increments inside of your model. And so notice how now that I have the snapping turned on and I have snap to increment turned on, this is now going to snap to different increments associated with your units that you have in here. So for example, if you look, and I'm gonna do a shift Z in order to lock this, lock this to the X and Y axes. If you move your mouse in here and you look at the values in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, notice this is moving based on the increment that you've set inside of your units on the left-hand side. So basically what that means is since my unit is set to feet, this object is automatically snapping to foot increments. So if you look in the corner, notice how this is only moving by negative one, negative two. Um, it's, it's not doing anything in between, right? It's not doing like a half inch or anything like that. And so you can set this to snap to units. You can also, down below, notice there's an option in here for absolute grid snap. So you can also check the box for absolute grid, grid snap. And what that means is that means when you move this object around, it's going to snap to the grid. This is snapping based on our object origin. Well, what we can do is we could tab in edit mode real quick and select this vertex and then we could do a shift s and we can set this so that our 3d cursor goes to our selected point so notice how now my 3d cursor is on this corner point well, what that means is now if i tab out of edit mode and i go to my object and i set my origin i can set my origin point to my 3d cursor so basically what that does is that moves that little box or that little dot over here well now if I do snapping, um, when I move this object around, notice how this is gonna do an absolute grid snap based on the corner of the object base instead of the center. So if you change your object origin to the corner, you can use this in order to snap to those corners if you want to. Also, notice that if you go to top down view, you also get a number of subdivisions in here. So then you can use this grid snap in order to snap to different subdivisions. So I set my subdivisions, for example, to be 12 in my viewport overlays. Well, what this means is this means that when I'm moving around in this mode right here, this is gonna snap to my grid, which is basically made up of one foot increments. Well, if I go to top down, it's gonna give me this subdivided view and I can snap to each one of these. Well, notice how the ones that I'm selecting in here, or notice how since there's 12 of these, that means that every one of these snaps to has an increment of one inch. And if you use millimeters and centimeters, you could do the same thing. But you can use this in order to snap to increments and your grid inside your model. And so in addition to this, not only can you use this to snap um, to a grid, you can also use this to snap objects to other objects. So let's say for example, that I was to come in here and we're gonna turn increment off. We're gonna turn 
absolute grid snap off and we're going to select snap to vertex. And so when I select snap to vertex, what this is going to do is this is going to use a vertex inside of your model and it's going to snap it so that it's aligned with another vertex. So notice how when I drag this around, for example, so let's say I had this off to the side somewhere. So just somewhere in space, it doesn't really matter. But notice how now if I move this, it's going to take your closest vertex and it's going to snap it to a vertex on an object. So notice how this is jumping and it's giving me a little circle over this. Well, this can be really great for um, aligning different things really quickly inside your object. One of the cool things about this is not only does this work when the objects are touching, let's say that you were to tap the G key in order to activate the move tool and tap Z to lock this to an axis, you can mouse over the different vertices in order to align this from an up, down, or left, right standpoint um, with this locked to an axis. So notice how this is allowing me to align this with a height without these objects actually touching. And so when you use the vertex snapping, it's going to give you four different options for different kinds of snaps that you can do. So the snap um, or a snap with closest is going to snap the closest point onto the target. So if I move this, for example, you can see how this is going to move your closest vertex and it's going to snap it to a vertex on this object. So notice how we have different corners snapping when we have closest selected. It's going to find that closest object. So snap with center, what that's going to do is that's going to snap the center of an object rather than the edges. So if I was to select snap with center, and then move this around. Notice how this is snapping this central point to align it with a corner. So instead of using vertices in here, it's snapping the center of my object um, to the vertices of the other object. So median is going to act in a very similar way to the center option. And active is going to use the pivot point of the object as the snapping. So basically what that means is let's say that we were to tab in edit mode, select this object, so let's say we were to select this vertex and do a shift S and uh, basically move our cursor to our selected point. Well then we could tab out of this and we could do a period and we could set our pivot point to the 3D cursor of this object. So then if we go to object, set our origin to our 3D cursor, now that new origin is going to become our snap object. So basically what active allows you to do is it allows you to set your object origin um, right here and use that as what you're going to snap with. So you can use this in order to quickly set which object you're going to snap with inside of Blender. So one thing I use the vertex snapping for, because I easily use vertex snapping the most of any of the snapping, I use it a lot when I'm adding walls with like Archipack. So for example, I've got these walls in here. Well, a lot of the time I want to add a new wall. So I'll go to Archipack and I'll add a wall, but what it does is it places this wall all the way over here. Well, instead of me trying to like click and drag this and move it and all of that, because you can see how it kind of messes everything up when you do that, um, what I like to do instead is I like to add a wall and then turn on my vertex snapping and then just tap the G key and move this so these corners align. So you can use this to really quickly align different objects. So another great thing you can use this for is if you're extruding objects. So if I tab into this and I select this face over here and I extrude this along the Z axis, I can use this in order to snap to the height of another object. So I can use this to really quickly draw something that's the same height as something else inside of your scene. So you can use Use this in order to quickly align or extrude. And I guess that's one thing to point out because I haven't really talked about that too much is this works not only for moving things around but it also works in things like edit mode. So for example if I was to take this cube and let's say I wanted to take this face and align it with this edge you could use it in order to move just this face if I wanted to. So I could use it to move this face just like this. You could also use it for some other things too. So if you were to extrude this down for example, let's say you wanted to extrude this down so that it was aligned right here. Notice how the extrusion tools work with snapping as well. So snapping is not just limited to moving things around in object mode. So vertex is probably the one I use the most. There's also options in here for edges and faces. Basically what that's going to do is that's going to move an object and it's going to lock it to an edge inside of your model. So notice how when I do this, um, if I move this object, it's going to lock the closest vertex 
somewhere on an edge. So it's not necessarily super precise, but if you want to align something on an edge just anywhere, you can set your edge snapping like that. So face is going to do the same thing, but it's going to move an object so that it's on a face. So, and this is probably a little bit more helpful if you set this with the active tool. So instead of selecting closest, you select active. What that allows you to do is that allows you to move this so that your uh, object origin, whatever that is, is going to align with a face. So you can use this to put the object origin on a face. Um, I would say this is probably pretty useful, especially if your origin is on the top or bottom of an object and you want to like drop it on a plane. This would be a good way to do that. Volume, I rarely, if ever, use. I'm pretty sure that just snaps this to an object. Um, some sort of a volume inside of your model, so just a 3D mesh. I'm not 100% clear on that one, to be honest with you. Edge center is going to allow you to find the central point of an edge, so like the midpoint. So if you want to move this so that it snaps to a midpoint, of an object, you can do that really easily. So I can use this in order to snap the middle of something to something else. So I can use this midpoint snapping in order to find this center. And then edge perpendicular, I don't really understand. Um, it's supposed to snap something to part of an edge that's perpendicular to a selected element, but I'm not 100% clear on what exactly that means. So if I move this around from this point, Right, So if I have this right here, it's basically snapping to the midpoint of these objects. I'm not really clear on how that's perpendicular to my base point that I had right here. Um, maybe because it's going across and then looking up and that's perpendicular. I'm not really clear on that one. So if you understand edge perpendicular, leave a comment down below and let me know what exactly you think about this. And then one other cool function about this is you can also do multiple different snaps at once. So let's say I want this to snap to increment vertex and edge, I can just do a shift click and I can select all of these. So what that allows me to do is that allows me to set an, set my snap so that it's going to snap to all of these different things, right? So now I can move this and it'll lock either or it'll snap either to vertices, it'll snap along edges, or it'll snap by increment. So you can use this in order to set multiple different snaps at once inside of Blender. And then the last thing I want to point out is down at the bottom, you can set this to affect moving, rotating, or scaling. So for example, if I turn rotation off and then I try to rotate this, and I'm going to go ahead and set this so that it's snapping with the closest again. But if I rotate this object and I move it around right now and I move it over an object, you notice how nothing is happening. However, if you were to come in here and you were going to turn effect rotate on, what that means is now if I rotate this object, it's going to start snapping to different vertices in here. So you can use this in order to snap to different things while you're rotating. And you can turn that on and off for all three of these by turning the effect on and off just by clicking on these. So if you want your rotations to snap, you can click on this. If you don't, you can click on it again. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know which snapping you use, how you use this function. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.